one of the criteria that we're using um, in, in evaluating where and how we enter uh, into different markets is, is really through the lens of a sustainable business model. So there's a, a variety of components that we need to have in place to reach a tipping point. And again, I, I think as, as technology advances, as we get better about using our scale, better learnings as we move from one developing market to another, it's enabled us to move that timeline a little bit forward. So we're able to enter into the markets earlier than we would have in the past, but the premise is still the same. Uh, we have to have a route to market that's, that's capable of sustaining our business in a reliable way. We have to have a, a base of supplier manufacturing capability that enables us to reach price points that are gonna allow that middle class to access our products. You know, one of the uh, fascinating story, in, in when we rolled Oreo out into China, uh, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of press around the, the way we customize flavor profiles to enable consumers to, to have a better connection with Oreo. But the honest answer, one of the biggest uh, accelerators for the Oreo business was our ability to bring a smaller pack size that hit a price point that aspirational consumers were able to reach up into the Oreo brand and be able to be part of that franchise. And then as economic prosperity grew, they grow with the brand, they pick up different parts of the franchise. So in a sustainable business model, we've also got to have the packaging and the price points that allow consumers to enter our franchise earlier on in their journey, and then we carry it on from there. One of my favorite topics right now is the, the misunderstanding that health and wellness uh, is a trend that is contained in developed markets. It simply is not true. There's $30 billion of better for you packaged snacks that are sold in developing markets. And the reality is that many of the health concerns that we have, and more importantly than health concerns, the lifestyle of healthy eating is, is a very integral part of many of the cultures around the world. And our opportunity to bring products first in those segments with the, the safety that comes with a, a large global brand, with the local uh, flavors that apply to the markets that we're in, I think give us an opportunity to bring what we call the power of big and small. So the power of being a big uh, company that sees the world through a variety of lenses drilled down to a local market and making something relevant for consumers that may not just be today, but jumping a generation or two ahead. This is where we've got to stay on our game because the, the local players are so uh, strong, quick, uh, and effective at really adapting to the moment. We've got to stay a step ahead and use the strengths that we have uh, to be successful in those markets. You know, one of the greatest limitations to growth for us in, in a lot of developing markets is the, the readiness or the infrastructure that, that surrounds it, especially when you talk about route to market. Although I do agree that this opportunity um, to, to find the right partners that can uh, match up with what uh, your whatever varied routes look like. You know, India jumping big box stores directly to e-commerce is a reality that, that's going to happen. So the opportunity to begin to invest in things other than just traditional marketing and traditional business is part of what we're looking at. More and more, the opportunity to um, to have a good portion of our external strategy targeting uh, infrastructure where we can invest, uh, purchase, um, build together is a, is a much better formula for success for us. One of the things we can bring to bear in a way that a lot of local brands and local businesses do is providing the same community involvement that a lot of local companies do. So our ability to come in and set up infrastructure around education. You know, one of the things that we talk a lot about in Mondelez is we should be the best developer of young marketing talent in any country that we go to. What that means is investing in both what our training programs are, but local educational programs as well. We're a food company, so understanding the nutritional needs of the markets that we're in is an incredibly important part of building brands and building businesses in these developing markets, where in the past we may have looked at it a little bit more opportunistically, where can we sell, where are we at the right point of penetration um, to make a business at critical Critical mass. Now we understand that we've got to build that over time. Uh, one of the one of the programs that we're that we're proudest of is a program called Coco Life, which is targeting um, uh, cocoa farmers in Africa, uh, with a specific focus on. 
uh, women that are farmers, that are able to build their own businesses through development, education, and then a model uh, and technology that allows them to dramatically change the yield on their crops. It solves an opportunity or an issue or challenge for us, which is local sourcing, but it also provides a footprint in the geography uh, that's recognizable for us as a company and also is helping build that, that infrastructure that we're talking about. So it's trickier. It's more holistic now than it used to be. Thank you.